Hey Internet Anglers, welcome back to another uh, another episode here of our Triton project. Today we're going to have a look at a problem that we've discovered on the uh, trim slash tilt motor. Uh, it's making a lot of noise. We don't know if it's the pump or if there's air in the fluid, uh, worn out bushings. So we're going to look into that, uh, go through, just grease everything, see if we can eliminate the noise uh, that way rather than um, or try and eliminate the noise so we can decide if it's the pump or if it's just something uh, in the assembly that's binding and making a bunch of noise. I think we're gonna try and take the lower unit off the motor, uh, maybe do a little disassembly on it, have a look around there. So yeah, uh, join us, let's get into it. You can hear the noise. Hopefully the battery's still on there. Okay, so we're just on the trim. There's work this starting on the trim. Yeah. See, like at the top of the trim, these brackets are just barely inside too, eh? Yeah. Just, but I don't know if that's where the thing would run at anyway. Like that'd be like, yeah. a lot of trim. That's you know, a ton of trim. That's you know, a ton. I definitely think that it sounds like it's coming from lower rather than okay. up here. Well, Once we located the source of our noise, we decided to uh, lube everything we could, all the grease fittings, and pull the tilt trim pins so that we could clean all the old grease off of them, uh, lube the bushings, and lube the pins themselves so we could reinsert uh, just to check and see if any of our creaking and popping from the tilt trim system might have been uh, just dryness in any of the joints or articulation points. With the pins out, we gave them a quick clean with some WD-40 and a scotch bright just to remove any surface grime on them that could be the source of binding. After that, we gave them a liberal application of just general marine grease and reinserted them back into the motor for a quick test. You're good there. Pretty quiet. Quite hurt. I don't know you, I think it's just dry. With our tilt trim noise hopefully resolved and deciding that we no longer need the motor on the back of the boat to have it connected to power to diagnose, uh, we decided to remove the lower unit, disconnect fuel and power, and get it off the back of the boat and onto a motor stand for the winter. Once the motor was off the back of the boat, it made accessing the bilge area a lot easier. One thing that helped us out was to remove the bilge area hatch. So we popped that off so that we could better access the bilge area to remove everything out of there. We had never seen in here before and there's lots of stuff jammed in there. So we were pretty eager to pull all the batteries and pull the uh, two stroke oil reserve out of there as well as the charger and all the plates so we could get at the plumbing and pumps. And behold, our first real view of the depths, the bowels of the boat, the, the bilge area. Uh, no, it looks like a big spaghetti mess of hoses, wires, and pumps, but I promise by the time we're done with it, uh, it'll look a lot tidier than that with all brand new pumps, hoses, and wiring.
Removing the last battery revealed a curdled mess of latex interior paint for some reason mixed with two-stroke oil, so I thought I better clean that up while I was in the area. Our next big object that was weighing the boat down was the full fuel tank. Uh, while I appreciate the gift of gas with how expensive it is in Ontario right now, uh, it was substantially heavy. So we removed the paneling to gain access to the fuel cell, uh, removed all of the ancillary items for it so that we could uh, pump it out. Not really even pump it out, I guess siphon it out. We've got one of these old school uh, ball valve type siphons so we used that to drain it into what felt like endless amounts of jerry cans. I think this tank holds about 213 liters and there had to be at least uh, 150 to 160 liters of fuel still in the tank when we got it so that substantially lightened the load and allowed us to uh, get the tank out of the boat because obviously we couldn't lift it with all the gas in it. With the fuel drained, all we had to do was remove some of the remaining brackets and hoses once we could shimmy the tank around. And then it was time to lift it up and out of the boat and reveal the mess of gunk and mold and mildew underneath. <laughs> look, the bass boat's paying for itself again. Look, hey? look, look, drop shot weight. Look, it's paying for itself again. Look, we're up a quarter. Oh, Hopefully yeah. that's tungsten. Bullet sinker. There's some fluorocarbon. Bullet, bullet sinker. Look, get bullet a, sinker. Get a paper towel out here. Let's get tossing this stuff. Look, look at it all. Look at the treasures. <laughs> There you go, bud. Look, look at the treasures. <laughs> nice, I don't know what that is, an old Senko. Wow. That sink was usable. Look, more fluorocarbon. I'm gonna turn that into a Ned rig and catch a smallmouth. Who, who would ever, ever thought? Oh, jackpot. Dime. More money. Screw. Quarter. Uh, screw head. Uh, oh, nice. Tungsten. Jesus, beautiful. Another quarter. Oh, that's an American, maybe. It's worth a lot more. Yeah, that's USD. Oh, that's that's USD. Better let us go down and visit the boys. At yeah, yeah, right yeah. That yeah. That's, that's the difference in Oh, nice. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. I got to look at this flipping and pitching special. Can you catch me? <laughs> that baby's... That's that baby, that baby'd still take That's one. That's probably twenty years old. That baby'd wow. still take one. Man, it's got a weird smell down here. This is a twenty years. That's about it. Other than a bunch of junk and gunk. Grab the two little washers that are laying there, whatever in the bottom. Of These guys, those are O-rings. Those are wacky rig O-rings. Are they? Yep, they sure are. Nice. <laughs> what about up the front here? This looks pretty thick. You got yeah. some stuff in there somewhere. Uh, I kind of got that. That's just gunk and junk. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to scrape that with a metal scraper. No. Um, but yeah, I will have to. I think we get the chromium out, man. Yeah, I'll hit her. Right yeah, now. hit her. Because uh, I don't like the look of it. No, me neither. No, in the tank here, too. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Fearing that the white stuff might be white mold. And with having a recent white mold outbreak in the shop, we decided the best course of action was to hit it with some Concrobium mold killer. And that was a wrap for the weekend, pretty much. Okay, so here's an overview of what we have done so far over the past couple weekends. Uh, we've got the motor off of the boat. Uh, we're gonna take the jack plate off next. We might use the jack plate to actually lift the boat to get it off the trailer. So we can take the trailer out and repair it. Undecided on that thus far. Uh, we removed everything that we could out of the bilge area. So the battery charger batteries, uh, the, what is that? The oil reservoir, 
had a look remote tank. Uh, we have removed the fuel cell out of the boat. So I'm going to take that to my shop, get it cleaned up inside and out. Uh, and we have removed the trolling motor off the bow. So that puts us in uh, really good shape. Uh, lighten the boat up to be able to lift it a bit and get it off the trailer and get it onto a cart. We have a, a, a chassis dolly out back that we're going to try and use to put the boat on while the trailer is gone. Uh, yeah, so that is a pretty successful couple weekends. Thanks for checking the video out, guys. Really appreciate all the new subscribers. Um, everybody on the Triton Boats Facebook page, thank you so much. You guys have been so kind to us. Uh, special shout out to Mealy Marine. We watch your guys' videos. Appreciate that you guys watch ours. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned to the next one.